This lesson deals with the solution of linear equations. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 12. Although we're going to turn to software tools to solve large matrices, we're going to take a look at a thing called Kramer's Rule for solving our class examples. This will allow us to show and prove some very powerful circuit analysis techniques and algorithms. Let's take a look at what's called Kramer's Rule. Given a set of n linear equations and n unknowns expressed in matrix form, where x1 through xn are unknowns, these are the relationships between the variables x1 through x sub n. The left hand side of the equation is a column vector with n rows in one column, and then a is a matrix with n rows and n columns, and again our unknowns would be n rows in one column. You can express this in a shorthand notation saying that b is equal to a times x. If the determinant of a is not zero, then this system of equations has a unique solution. And you can find the jth element here by taking a ratio of two determinants. The matrix A sub J is the matrix obtained from the matrix A by replacing the jth column of A by the column of B's from the left-hand side of the equation. And then taking the ratio of these two determinants is the value of X sub J. I'll leave the proof of this to a course in linear algebra. Let's start out with taking a look at what is a two by two matrix, in other words, two rows and two columns. The determinant here is the product of A11 and A22 minus A21 times A12, just the product of their diagonal subtracted. The determinant of a three by three matrix is the next thing to look at. And again, the entries here tell you which row and which column you're in. So here's row one, column three. Here's row two, column one row three, column two. It turns out that the determinant of a three by three matrix contains several two by two determinants. Let's define the terms we needed to solve for that. A second order determinant is obtained by deleting the ith row and the jth column from our determinant of A. We're going to call that the minor of the element A sub i j of A. And this is true for i equals one through three and j equals one through three. The cofactor of the element a sub i j of the determinant a is defined as just multiplying minus one to the i plus j times minor, and then we'll define what a determinant is. The determinant of a can be found six different ways, and that is to multiply a sub i one times c sub i one plus a i two times c i two plus a i three c i three, where a can be one, two, or three. It's called a row expansion. You could also do what's called a column expansion. This would be a 1j, c1j, a2j, c2j, plus a3j, c3j, where j can be 1, 2, or 3. Let me do an example to show you how this actually works. I have a simple matrix here, and I'm going to find the determinant of this 3 by 3. And there are six different ways of doing this. I'm going to pick the case where j is equal to 1. And this is called a column expansion. We're going to be taking a look at this expression with j equals to 1 in it. So this is what that would correspond to. It would be a11, c11, a21, c21, and a31, c1. c11 is the leading row one and column one. And then we have this two by two matrix. We're gonna find the determinant of that, and then we're gonna multiply that by minus one to the i plus j, which is gonna be one plus one. Multiply this times this, which is minus nine, and then minus a minus one times one. And it gives you minus eight. We're going to multiply these two together to give us the first term in this determinant. Second cofactor we're going to find right here is taking a look at wiping out row 2 and column 1. We're left with this 2 by 2 matrix. We'll find its determinant and then multiply that times minus 1 to the 2 plus 1. And of course the term A21 is just in the second row first column. So we're going to multiply this with this result. Minus 1 to the 2 plus 1 is, is minus 1 cubed, and that's just going to be equal to minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1. And then the determinant here is minus 3 times 1 minus a minus 1 times 2. And that gives us a value equal to 1. And lastly, the third cofactor, the 3, 1, is going to be wiping out in our 3 by 3, row 3, column 1, and we're left with this 2 by 2 matrix, which will be the matrix we use to find our determinant. So now we have minus 1 to the 3 plus 1, but that's minus 1 to the 4th power. So multiplying minus 1 4 times, you get a plus 1. 
And then here's that two by two matrix, which will then become our determinant of one times one minus three times two. That gives us a value of minus five. The determinant of A is equal to A11 times C11, A21 times C21, plus A31 times C31. And that turns out to be minus 24. Okay, let's find the determinant of a four by four matrix. I guess we're gonna add one more row and one more column here. The determinant turns out to be the same formula, just adding another term following the same pattern here. We had AI1, CI1, AI2, CI2, plus AI3, CI3, and then we're gonna add AI4, CI4, where I can be equal to one, two, three, or four. It's again called a row expansion. And then our column expansion is gonna add that same term on again. And to do a five by five, a six by six, we're just gonna extend this. I've got eight different ways I can find the determinants. So I'm just gonna find one of these. They'll all be equal to each other. And um, sometimes there's an advantage to use one over another, but right now, as far as we're concerned, they're all basically the same amount of work. Take a look at an example. Here's a four by four matrix. I'm gonna find the determinant of that four by four. Let's expand down column one. It's doing that previous formula with J equal to one. Multiply one times minus one to the one plus one, and then times this submatrix, and we're gonna find the determinant of this three by three. Remember in the three by three, there are several two by twos. The next term is gonna multiply two times minus one to the two plus one, and then we're gonna wipe out this row and this column, and this is the three by three that we're left with right here. And then the next term, multiply minus one, then multiply that by the cofactor, which is minus one to the three plus one, and then we're gonna wipe out this row and this column, and this is the three by three determinant we're left with, and that's shown right here. Lastly, last cofactor, we're gonna wipe out this row and this column, we're gonna multiply that by three, minus one to the four plus one, and then this is the remaining three by three determinant that's left. Real quick pattern here, because of the minus one to the i plus j, the first term here is positive, negative, positive and negative, and we do that multiplication. You can calculate this each time, but just remember there's an alternating sign pattern. And it, same is true when you go across this way. So if this is minus one to the one plus one, this will be minus one to the one plus two, and that's gonna be a negative term. So these, the patterns are also gonna alternate this way. So positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one, will be the term in our cofactor. Got to find the determinant of four three by threes, and in those Three by threes, there's a combination of three two by twos. I'll let you find those, just made some practicing. And so I'm gonna just write down the values here, let you figure those out. And then multiplying those by the corresponding plus ones and minus ones. And then the values of the A's in column one. I'm gonna getting a value of eight. And to find an N by N, you just do the, the same process. Now let's go back to the problem that we were working on in the last lesson, we found from the circuit that we're writing the equations that we had this relationship with the node voltages V1, V2, and V3. And this is back on page 11 in chapter three. This is how we use Kramer's rule. If you wanna solve for, say, this voltage V2 here, we're gonna take this matrix and replace column two, which is the column associated with this voltage, and take this column from the left-hand side and put it into here. So I've shown here in yellow. And the ratio of that determinant to the original matrix determinant is the value of V2. Let's look at finding the determinants. Now I look for a column or a row that has a zero in it. There's one right here. I'm gonna do a column expansion down this column. I'll be multiplying with my minus one term, a minus one, a plus one, and a minus one. Again, you can calculate that as minus one to the i plus j. I just remember that, again, the alternating pattern. But because there's a zero here, I'll have a zero times the remaining two by two. So one less thing to calculate. First term would be minus seven times, again, minus one to the i plus j, which is gonna be cubed, which would give me a minus one. And then wiping out this row and this column, I'm left with this two by two here. The next result is gonna be zero times the remaining two by two determinant, but that's just gonna be zero. And then the last term here, I'm gonna wipe out this row and this column, we're left with this two by two. That's shown over here. I'm gonna multiply two times minus one to the three plus two. But again, that's gonna be equal to a minus one because I've got a minus one plus one minus one. Got just a couple 
two by twos to do here. So this times this is a minus 1.75 minus a minus a minus gives me minus one. Here I've got zero and here I've got this times this is minus three. And then this times this is a minus 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 0.25. That turns out to be minus 12.75. Let's not to find the determinant of G here now, which is the denominator. And so let's go back to this matrix again. What we'll do now is I'm gonna go down this column, there's no zero here, so I'm just gonna take this one. One and a half times this determinant, again, multiplied by a plus one. And wipe out this row in this column, it's gonna give me this two by two times minus a half, and then times another minus one. And then lastly, I'm gonna have this times a plus one times this two by two over here. That's shown on page 18. Now we can multiply this times this. This turned out to be 8.75, and then minus this is a minus 4. Again, 1 and a half times plus 1. Then I've got minus a half times a minus 1. This times this is minus 1.75, and then this times this is a minus 1. And then the last term here, we've got minus a half times plus 1, so we're going to get minus a half. And then this times this is minus 2 times minus 0.5, which is plus 1, and then minus this is going to be a plus 1.25. All that together gives me 4.625. So now the value of V2 is our first determinant divided by our second determinant, and that turned out to be minus 2.7568. Right, do this again if you want to go solve for V1 and V3, and I'll just give you the answers here, and maybe have you practice that and see if you can solve for those. Also check to see if your calculator can solve matrices, and if you just enter these those in columns and then be able to get an answer much quicker. We also turn to a program called MATLAB to do this a little bit later in the chapter. And this is how you solve linear equations using matrices.